There's a tremendous amount of confusion about big data and how to derive value from that. We see the ability, and as an industry, that there's a tremendous amount that can be done with it, but we're now in the process of trying to figure that out. And we're going to look at how to take analytics, real-time analytics, and decision-making, roll it all into one, and optimize value within the organization. So if you look at data less in the context of it sits in an individual bucket and we'll go do things with it, and you think of it more existing along a timeline of life, then what we have is we'll start to build out, and I'll explain this a little bit more detailed, we start to see context. And when we look at that context of the data, it makes far more sense. So what I have here is a little timeline of data. Data is created in the beginning. And as time moves on, what we see in the beginning is it's a very, in, very decision-making oriented um, event that happens. A piece of data comes in, I need to make a decision on it. I need to place an ad or place a trade or examine a network packet. Lots of individual things happen in that decision-making process. And then time moves on and I start to look at that piece of data that came in, that event, in the context of its near neighbors. I want to do real-time analytics. So analytics on data that is moving very fast is a huge value problem that we see in the market today. A lot of people are interested in doing that because they can provide context to the, to the business value and the decisions that are going on in their environment. Then time continues to move on and we start to get into what we call a record lookup. Bitly is a perfect example I often use. Bitly exists and it's a tremendous amount of data, but it's very much a one record lookup. I put something in and at some point in time I take that thing back out. So it, it's a problem, it's a hard space and it's very much sort of in this pathway of timeline as we look at it going forward here. Time continues to move on and then we start to look at data much more in a historical perspective. We have 30, 60, 90 days of data. We may have 10 years worth of data, but we're looking in that data and we're doing the classic business intelligence type reports. We're examining trends, we're ex examining seasonality, we're looking for certain patterns in, in uh, historical data. And then we move on even further and we get into a new area now where we're starting to see some very, very clever things going on and a lot of excitement, and that's an exploratory analytics. So whereas in reports we know what we're looking at, we've kind of defined the reports ahead of time, exploratory analytics is more about finding things that I don't really know. What might be there? Fraud detection patterns are a great example there. If transaction A, B, C, D come in, there's an 80% likelihood that E is a fraudulent transaction. That's the kind of things we're doing in exploratory data. So now that we have a context where we really have data existing along a timeline, from its creation to real-time analytics to looking up individual records to historical uh, business intelligence type reports to exploratory, what became very interesting was that we added a value of data access to this graph. And it became a really interesting exercise. And we started to look at how the value of data changed over time. The course of this timeline from transaction to exploratory, the value of data shifts in very dramatic ways. So what we realized was, and let's look at an example here, as data starts, it's created. I use an example, I buy uh, an iPad, and I go down to the Cambridge store and I buy an iPad. That data, when it's created, when I, the moment I swipe that ca credit card transaction, that data is of its utmost value at that individual item level. So I swipe that card, it's important to Apple, to me, to credit card companies, to authorization companies, to fraud detection companies. Everybody's looking at that transaction and in its single entity is of its piece of highest value. But as time moves on, the value of that individual data item starts to decline. I look at it in the context of its near neighbors, it might be an inventory situation. The iPads are, are in, there's 12 of them now instead of 13 because I bought one and somebody who's looking at that inventory will now see something different. And then it continues to move on until the point where several months down the road, nobody cares that I bought an iPad at the Cambridge store. What they do care about is looking at my data aggregated with everybody else's data. So if there's 100,000 people that are looking at and purchasing iPads, what can they derive from the knowledge that I bought an iPad in my subsequent purchases to determine how better to upsell or to sell more information, more capabilities, more products to that same customer? So what we now see is the value in the aggregate of data rising. So we have these two intersection points where the value of data lives along these two curves and it has very interesting characteristics. And the thing that became the, the real moment of enlightenment to us was when we looked at these and we said, well, in this new world of big data, where things are no longer small, simple, and slow, now they're fast, they're complex, and they're very large, the traditional database no longer solves those problems. 
The purpose of building databases today is to solve very specific areas along these value axes. And we see that. We see the Hadoop infrastructure plays. They're solving a lot of the exploratory problems. There's a number of very interesting technologies there. The data warehouses have solved that problem for a number of years now, and they're really doing a lot of a, a great job of deriving business value for people. We see NoSQL solving a tremendous amount of this record lookup problem. And then we move into the velocity side, and that's of particular interest to me at VoltDB because we think that there's a tremendous amount of value to be had there. And that value is all around making decisions faster, making them in real time, and making them more informed. So as we start to look at this particular value axis of data as it's changing over time, we see the technologies overlaying into there and actually some fairly nice buckets. So now we can make some context out of this and see based on what do I need to accomplish as a customer, where to use and at least what buckets to look at for technology solutions. That's where we're at today, and I think it gets very exciting, and even more exciting, actually, when we start to look at where we're going to be in the next three to five years. And what we're doing, what we're seeing as an industry, is we're seeing the ability to take knowledge from each one of those analytics steps, right? The only reason you do analytics ever is to make better decisions. And the question is, is when should you make those decisions? So what we're seeing, which is really exciting, is the ability to take that data from each step within the analytics systems and feed it back into the real-time decision-making process. And what we have then is we have a system that's getting more intelligent on its own. It's creating more value to the customer. It's creating more value to the end user. And it's just creating a better experience experience for the, everybody involved in the value chain. That's the point at which we start to see the world evolving into this decision-making process where data truly is being used from its oldest state to its newest state to make decisions for organizations in real time. And at VoltDB, that's what we do, is figure out how to optimize the business value around big data applications with velocity and real-time analytics.